the business thrived then because we took on the Triumph. And this is obviously down still on Saltair Road. Saltair Road, yeah. Um, you then I got, I got associated with Triumph in the 30s after Scott. Mm. Uh, he thought it was Scott because they wouldn't pay him anything. Mm. Um, and uh, they didn't have any money, that's why. Mm. They were going, yeah, typical motorcycle manufacturer in those days, they were all a bit skin. Yeah. He started an association with Triumph and uh, got involved with Edward Turner, a famous designer from Triumph who designed the Speed Twin and various things mm. um, that are uh, household names now. So what was the next step with the company? It became a dealership that had all sorts of franchises as they did in those days. Yeah. You know, it had uh, most of the uh, British made marks. You know. mm. Never had Norton. In those days, believe it or not, but we had so uh, like aerial beats lots of these, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and then it sort of got more refined. We had Lambretta scooters, of course, as well. Mm. Um, nineteen fifty nine. I mean, that was big. I mean, we sold a hundred thousand scooters in nineteen fifty nine. You know, registered in this country. Were you a more than that's a rocker? More, that's more. That was a rocker, <laughs> um, definitely. No way, I'm going to wear a silly fur coat with, with a, a, a silly coat with a frilly fur collar on. It's a um, trend. Yeah, it might be a trend again now, but uh, anyway, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't get into that. Um, so, uh, yes, we evolved as a proper dealership, but we took on quite a lot of um, franchises. We also had as many motorcycle dealers as we had ended up selling Reliance as well. Yeah, yeah. And did very well at Reliance. For, in fact, I opened a separate shop for Reliance. The tricycle, yeah, if you got a motorcycle licence, you could drive a Reliant. Yeah. Uh, it originally started, it didn't have to have a reverse gear, which was quite silly. Yeah. 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 I mean, there used to be a bond that we sold, and you had to open the bonnet and kick start it. To start it, then run round and get in it. <laughs> Was there any uh, unusual stuff that you sold? We had Izettas, which were mm. a German made car and a bubble car. Two wheel at the front, one at the back, wasn't it? And uh, two at the front, one at the back. Yeah. Big front door that opened outwards. I bet there were some funny moments you had in those sort of vehicles at the time. I took a. has been a bit of a, you know, um, what they call it, a young man um, trying to attract women uh, mm. as, as you do. Um, took a lady out in the uh, Izetta uh, and made a complete idiot of myself by parking it relatively downhill, slightly in a slight in incline against the wall at a picture house car park. Mm. And couldn't get out. Oh, couldn't, get out the couldn't, door, couldn't, yeah. couldn't open the door. No screaming and shouting for someone to come and push us back so we could get out. Yeah, not a good start. No, no. Not a good start. No. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, we even had the Messerschmitt as well. I don't know whether we can remember that, but that was where he sat the driver sat oh, in the front either. and the, the passenger went behind. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a little three wheeler. We even had those at one stage. Um, I bet you wish you had a few of them kicking about now to work a fortune or Well, something. yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't think they're actually super collectible. Collectible. Right. Um, I'd rather have a few. Uh, Honda 60s or something like oh, that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Were you actually working at the shop at that time? Um, our, our sales director at the time was Colin Appleyard, who uh, oh. who um, ran the business. Um, and uh, and because he used to do a bit of sidecar racing in his day. We did a bit of solo racing, but it was a bit of a disaster and had a, had a nasty accident in the Isle of Man. Um, so he stopped doing that and took up sidecar racing. Really? He was running the business and uh, and he changed it quite a bit. Uh, whilst my dad was an extremely good raconteur, he was an after-dinner speaker, he was known for his pranks and, yeah, he was just generally quite a lad. Mm. Um, I don't know, a pint or two as well and, uh, yes. So that runs in the family then? That certainly does. Um, God frightens him, I think, what we used to do, but that's another story, isn't it? Mm. Or stories. So Colin then, yes, got on, we took on the Hillman Agency. Right. So from the little shop in Shipley, well, little shop, it was quite a big shop actually in those days, but we had, I don't know how many franchises, but there was Triumph, BSA, Yamaha, Honda, 
Suzuki, Reliant, Hillman, all ran out of the same showroom. It can't was crazy. Can't imagine it, can you? Crazy. And we only had one little door to put them in through the front. It just fit in. It was a real job getting cars in and out. But you did it in those days. You just mm. did those things. And, uh, and second-hand cars as well. So what was the next step with the company? When I left, when I finished at Triumphs, mm. it started to, it's heading towards turning to a cooperative. And I just don't have anything to do with that. I'm uh, not a great fan of unions and shop stewards suddenly becoming managers because they came out, it was chaotic, I thought. Um, anyway, I left there and came home to work at the the shop that was in 1970, mm. uh, hence 50 years at the shop now. Mm. And then when I came back, Colin Appleyard left to start on his own. He said, Right, um, to my father, now your son's back, he's gonna, you know, he can take over because I'm gonna go and start on my own. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, the rest of the family fell out with Colin. So you got on really well with Colin then? He became my best mate, he's, well, he had been, he's known him all my life. And, yeah. uh, he, uh, you were a similar age, he'd be a little bit older. No, he was uh, 13 years older than me. Oh, right. Um, and he uh, he went to work on his own, so suddenly um, uh, I came home in the December 1970. 1971, January 71, I was suddenly running the business. So when you came back and started running the company, how did you find it? I mean, I had a fair idea because I've been working in the service department and working with customers, going to dealers, showrooms and things, and uh, when I worked at Triumph. And uh, there's a whole saga there of different stories and oh, things that happened.